This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm joined by John Rowling. Um, I just want to talk to you about firstly commentating on, on Wilder Fury. How was that as an experience for you? It was uh, a step back in time in a lot of ways. It was like going back to the great days of uh, Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, of course, Mike Tyson. It was a proper heavyweight fight and a proper heavyweight fight in the United States. It felt like a big deal and it was a big deal. It had the world talk, had the world talking and it, and it was a tremendous fight, great fight. Obviously, the clip in the 12th round where Fury got dropped and it looked like it was completely out, it was, it's gone viral. And uh, as I said, you were commentating on it, so uh, <laughs> made you famous as well in, in some sort of way. Well, I, I mean, I still watch that and hear about that. And I still wonder how on earth the guy got up in that 12th round. When he went down, you know, right hand, left hand, and, he down, and he's down there, bangs his head on the, on the ring on the ring canvas, I thought he'd be down there for a couple of minutes. Never mind, get up at a count of six and look fresh as a daisy and win the rest of the round. It was just, it was one of the most amazing comebacks from seemingly being on the brink of defeat that I've ever seen in, in 30 years of commentating. Do you think any other current boxer in that, in that scenario would have got up and, and dealt with a situation like that? As you said, Fury nearly had Wilder out himself. Well, who knows? You know, I mean, that's a, that's a difficult call, isn't it? All you, all you do know is that he was in massive trouble and got up and won it and, and, and uh, uh, won the rest of the round, as far as I'm concerned, and really should have got the verdict in the fight. But it was a, gr it was a great night for, for Tyson Fury. He did extraordinarily well. When you think what he'd been through to actually do what he did in that fight against, uh, against Deontay Wilder was, was nothing short of incredible. The feeling, obviously, in the UK was that Fury got robbed. I think that's the feeling across the world. What was it like ringside? What were people saying straight after the fight? Well, that he'd won. I mean, we all thought we all thought he'd won the fight, unquestionably. Uh, I think I think it was huge credit to Tyson that when that verdict came and it was announced as a draw, that he didn't kick off and really, uh, really, you know, sort of go bonkers about the fact that he'd been ro robbed. Because I think with thousands of people there, a lot of travelers who'd gone across to, to watch him in Los Angeles, I think, you know, it could have been a very, very volatile atmosphere. And the fact that, that Tyson took it so sensibly and in such a mature manner, so probably saved boxing from what could have been a very nasty moment. If he did react in a rage of fury, let's say, um, and as you said, all the travelling fans there sort of caused a riot. Do you think that's what we'd be talking about still, rather than the fight itself? Well, mercifully, it didn't happen. So, you know, I mean, it's only my surmisal that it might have happened. I mean, there's no, no guarantee that it would have happened. But I think that the fact that he took it well was uh, indicative of the fact that he really has matured so much, not only as a fighter, but as a man. Out of all the sort of fights you've been to and commentated on, where does that rank? Well, it's up there. Um, I, I think the overall standard of the fight has been better elsewhere. You know, when you thought when you saw Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield, or Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bow, I think technically they were they were much better fighters because Deontay Wilder as a boxer is very very limited, but he does have huge punch power. So it was it was it was tremendously exciting, massively exciting, and probably the best fight in the heavyweight division that certainly that the United States has seen since uh, since Lennox Lewis fought uh, Vitaly Klitschko. I think it's you know it's a throwback to that extent but you know actually as a as a heavyweight contest I'm not convinced it was as good as uh, as the Bo Holyfield fights but it was up there amazing drama and it really put heavyweight boxing in the United States back on the radar straight away everybody's talking about it again and the United States are in there bidding and hoping that uh, a rematch is going to be over there rather than over here. Now, off camera, you're telling me about some comments Bob Arum made about Anthony Joshua. Could you just sort of go into that, please? Well, Bob Arum's just saying that he thinks that uh, Anthony Joshua ought to be fighting one of the big names, ought to be fighting either Fury or Wilder or even Dillian White, and that over in the United States at the moment, the perception among the boxing public there is that the world number one is Tyson Fury. And uh, Bob Aaron was just asked the question, you know, where does 
AJ stand. And over here, Anthony Joshua is, is massive news over in the UK, and, and rightly so. He's been brilliantly promoted and has made astronomical amounts of money. But on the world stage, is he where he could be? And the answer, all Bob's saying, you know, at the age of 87, and after having had God knows how many years of promotional experience working with all the great middleweights with Muhammad Ali right back to the 1960s, he's just saying, in his opinion, AJ could do more. Of course, if Anthony Joshua was to say, oh, I wonder if you could help me, uh, Mr. Aram, um, you can guarantee he would absolutely bite his arm off, you know. I mean, AJ remains a, a huge, a huge draw, and maybe there was just a little bit of, of mischief in what Bob was saying. Well, talking about mischief, um, Dillian White has come on record. Um, he said he's been talking to PBC. Uh, Rumours about him joining Frank Warren, potentially. What have you made of all that? I think he just wants a big fight, doesn't he? I think he'd, uh, I think he'd kind of thought that he was going to get the uh, Anthony Joshua rematch in, in April. And now it's looking less likely that that's going to happen. And he thinks he's established himself as a headline act, and that uh, and that he deserves another another big shot. And you know, maybe he's right. I, I do think that uh, Dillian has improved a lot since the guy who was beaten by Anthony Joshua first time around. Then he was raw. He was ill-disciplined. I think his his training has made him a very much better fighter. And he is uh, he's a danger man. You know, he's a genuine fighting man, and he's a hard, hard, hard guy. Now, we were here at press conference for Crawford Khan last week, and obviously you were on stage. A lot of the comments on the press conference video is, what's John Rawlin doing here? Um, you know, Khan's obviously attached with Eddie Hearn, Matchroom and Sky. What's your involvement? Could you just explain how that sort of came about for you to be on that stage and who contacted you for that? I was contacted by Bob Arum's organisation asking if I'd host the press conference. They liked the way that I do them over here. And I was asked if I could do it. I was, uh, I, I asked uh, with my contacts in television and uh, with Frank Warren's promotional organisation whether they had any objections, and I was told no. So, uh, so I went ahead and did it. And, and so far as the British television is concerned, it's still not been announced who's going to be doing it. And it may well be that it still winds up on, on BT or Box Nation. Uh, that, that hasn't been nailed down yet. So although Amir Khan promotionally is with Matchroom from a television perspective, there's no uh, automatic guarantee that it's going to be on Sky. Okay, just moving back to last year again, one of the best fights of the year, Frampton, Warrington. Um, what's your gut instinct telling you? Do you think Carl Frampton will continue? Have you heard anything? Well, my understanding is that he is going to fight on. Um, I think Carl, in the, in the run-up to that fight, he said that he felt as well as he'd ever felt, and he felt as though he'd still got something left in the tank. And although on the night... Uh, Josh Warrington was absolutely inspired. I think uh, I think Carl probably after a little bit of time to reassess believes that he's got fights still within him and I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him fight again perhaps at the Odyssey in Belfast this summer and uh, if he gets a rehabilitation victory under his belt then we move on from there. The, and he'll, he'll believe, that, and I think he's right, that there are still big fights out there for him. You know, the, the Santa Cruz fight hasn't gone away simply because he's lost to Josh Warrington. If he'd been annihilated by Josh Warrington, then yes, it would have gone away. But he wasn't. It was a competitive fight. It was one of the best fights that we've seen in a British ring. And to have a fight of that stature, you don't just have one guy steamrollering all over him. He was right in that fight, right up to the conclusion. And remember, he's the bloke who beat Leo Santa Cruz. He lost the rematch. So there is potentially, somewhere down the line, in my opinion, a third fight there. And who knows, maybe even a Josh Warrington rematch if he looks good enough in a comeback fight. And with Josh Warrington... Um Obviously, we know the situation with Kid Galahad. The purse bids have been extended. But I think deep down he wants to fight Valdez. Um, what would you rather see, John? Well, he wants to fight in America, doesn't he? And he's not going to fight uh, Kid Galahad in, in America. Uh, I think Valdez is the man he wants. Valdez is going to be in the ring shortly. And I think they'll just take a look at how he looks, how long he's going to be 
away from boxing after that and take it from there. I'm sure Josh would rather fight Valdez than Galahad, and it would certainly be, a, well, in my opinion, it would be a, a more marketable fight if it were to happen. Just lastly, um, some good news about Billy Joe Saunders. been made mandatory for his old belt against Andrade. What did you make of the whole situation with Billy Joe about the, the nasal spray? Did you, did you sort of buy the excuse? Well, uh, I mean, I know mo no more about it than you do. I don't have an inside track on this. All I do know is that it's one of the substances which is borderline. Had it been, had it been tested in the UK, that would have been a clear, a clear, a clear test. That would not have been a, ne a negative reading, and he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been banned as a result of something under British testing rules. Um, I think he was I think he was unfortunate, put it that way. Billy's done some silly things in his career, and uh, he, if he were here now, you know, I wouldn't be afraid of saying that. And he'd agree. I think he's probably done a lot of things that he would regret, probably outside the ring. But I think on that particular issue, he was a little bit unlucky. And he is a very, very talented fighter still. And he's still got two or three years at the top. And he might still get the opportunity to go right to the very top. And I, I personally hope so, because you don't like to see anybody with that sort of talent walk away unfulfilled. Well, yeah, looking forward to how he gets on. Do you think he beats Andrade? Uh, I do, actually. Yeah, I think a fully fit Billy Joe would be too slick and too clever. I think he would beat him, yeah. And if that prediction is correct, obviously he would like to move forward in terms of Canelo, Golovkin, Danny Jacobs. Can, can he sort of mix it with them top boys and beat them as well, in your opinion? <laughs> Depends where the fight is, doesn't it, I think. Uh, I think uh, if they can get the fight over here, then, uh, then he's, got, he's got good chances. Um, I think Canelo has, has had, what should we say, favourable ways of looking at his last performances against Golovkin from the judges. Uh, particularly the first fight, um, and uh, Billy Joe will be mindful of that. You know, I think uh, perhaps Canelo is the big cash cow in boxing right now, so to beat him, you've really got to annihilate him. Well, lots of people talk about the Lara fight, don't they? And uh, bring that up, and the, obviously the Floyd Mayweather, one of the cards. Mayweather, you know, one of the cards there. You know, Mayweather schooled him, and yet the cards didn't, or didn't unanimously reflect that. Anyways, John Rawlins, I appreciate your time. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.